Hello everyone. Welcome on Smart Study. This video is based on MCQ A Visit to Cambridge Chapter 7 Honey Dew Class 8 English. Before we begin our quiz session, let me tell you that I have made videos on other chapters of Honey Dew and It So Happened. If you want them, you can grab the link from the description box and also from the i button which is present on the right corner of your video. Without further delay, let's begin our quiz session. Who is the author of A Visit to Cambridge? First option is Stephen Hawking, second for Dos Kanga, third a scientist, fourth anonymous. Anonymous means unknown name or without name. Author of A Visit to Cambridge is Firdaus Kanga. He is an actor and a writer. He has written a book Heaven on Wheels about his experience in the United Kingdom. Moreover, A Visit to Cambridge is a part of this book Heaven on Wheels. What disease does Firdaus Kanga suffer from? First, he was born with brittle bones. Second, paralysis. third he did not suffer from any disease fourth none of the above author of this story for dos kanga was born with brittle bones this is a genetic disorder in which bones tend to break very easily who is an astrophysicist first option who studies and researches about how stars and planet work second astrophysicist is an astrologer third a physics teacher fourth none of these astrophysicist is a person who studies and researches about stars planets and universe who is stephen hawking a great scientist an astrophysicist and author of a brief history of time an engineer a mathematics teacher or a doctor stephen hawking was a great scientist an astrophysicist and also author of one of the biggest best selling books a brief history of time option 1 is the right answer how did stephen interact with people let's see options with the help of computer by punching buttons using his finger second with the help of his mobile phone third by sign language fourth both option 2 and 3 stephen's body was completely paralyzed and he had lost his voice also he could not move his body except only a bit of movement was left to his finger which he used to punch buttons on the computer and on behalf of him a voice synthesizer spoke to people what is the synonym of the phrase every so often options are from time to time and wish chronically or corps As I always do, I am going to explain meanings of all the words given in the options. Corpse is a dead body. Chronically means continued for a long time. This word is usually used to describe diseases. Moreover, it can be used to describe anything which lasts long or continues for a very long period of time. Next one is anguish, which means severe mental or physical pain and suffering. From time to time means occasionally or at an interval. Coming back to the question what is the synonym of the phrase every so often it means from time to time correct answer is option 1 I find it amusing when people patronize me who said this line to whom option 1 Stephen said this to Kanga second Kanga said this to the author third Kanga said this to Stephen's assistant fourth Stephen said this to his assistant Now let's discuss who said this line to whom. I find it amusing. Amusing means funny or entertaining. When people patronize me, patronize means when people treat you with kindness but at the same time make you feel you are inferior to others. Stephen said this line to Kanga and with this he wants to say that he finds it funny and entertaining when people show kindness to him. but at the same time make him realize he is inferior to others on the basis of his disability correct answer of this question is option 1 name of stephen's biggest best selling book is a brief history of time a brief history of mankind evolution of human or evolution of universe besides being one of the greatest scientists of our time stephen was author of one of the biggest best selling books which was a brief history of time 
Stephen had become the successor to Isaac Newton at the University of Cambridge, Albert Einstein, his father or nobody. Stephen had become the successor to Isaac Newton at the University of Cambridge. He was a great scientist and an astrophysicist. He had done many researches on planets, stars and universe. Due to all these reasons, Stephen got the chair of Isaac Newton at the University of Cambridge. What do you understand by claustrophobia? Term claustrophobia is made up of two words, claustro and phobia. Claustro stands for confined places or closed spaces, while phobia means fear. Therefore, claustrophobia means fear of closed spaces. Now, what is the fear of fire called? It is called pyrophobia. Pyro stands for fire and phobia for fear. So, pyrophobia means fear of fire. Fear of water is called hydrophobia, where hydro stands for water. And fear of books is called bibliophobia where Biblio stands for books. Every time he spoke to the scientist, the writer felt guilty because the author was an invited guest. The scientist was not willing to talk to him. The scientist was not paying attention to the author or he forced the scientist to use his voice synthesizer. The writer felt as if he was troubling the scientist by asking questions to him. This is because in order to respond, the scientist had to punch buttons on the computer and make use of his voice synthesizer. This was frustrating and exhausting to the scientist. Author could observe the resultant anguish on the face of Stephen. That's why he felt guilty every time he spoke to him. Option 1 is the correct answer of this question. I could feel his anguish. Anguish is physical or mental pain and suffering experienced by any person. This line was said by author and it was meant for Stephen's pain and suffering. Now the question is what was the anguish? Let's have a look on the options. Stephen's inability to express his thoughts, ideas and feelings with the pace of his mind. Second, Stephen was getting bored in author's company. No, he wasn't getting bored in author's company at all. In fact, he enjoyed the process of exchanging ideas with the author. That's why second is wrong. Let's come to the third point. He was unable to go for a world tour. It is nowhere mentioned in the textbook that Stephen wanted to go for a world tour. Therefore, third is wrong. Fourth option says none of the above. Now it's time to discuss the answer. Stephen's complete body was paralyzed. Moreover, he could not speak. His brain brimmed with ideas and his mind worked at a faster speed. But his body allowed to express those thoughts at a much slower pace. He could not speak freely and clearly. He had to use his finger every so often to punch buttons on the computer to express himself. And this made Stephen frustrated and exhausted. I felt a huge relief in the possibility of my body. The highlighted words refer to Author says these lines when he meets Stephen and compares his condition and the ability of movements with himself. Author could neither walk nor run. And by looking at the picture of the author in the book, we can say that he used to move from one place to another only in the wheelchair. These evidences prove that options 1, 3 and 4 are wrong. Author had brittle bones since birth, but he was in a far better condition as compared to Stephen. Stephen was completely paralyzed and could not move his body parts at all. Moreover, he had lost his voice. Stephen had a lot more difficulty in expressing his ideas and emotions. But on the other hand, Arthur could shift in his wheelchair and move his wrist. And for that, he had a huge sense of relief. Additionally, he was thankful for all the movements he could make by sitting in the wheelchair. Thus, the highlighted words, possibility of my body refers to his ability to shift in the wheelchair and turn his wrist. What message does Stephen give to differently abled people? First option, differently abled should always focus on their weaknesses. Second, disabled should work on what they are good at, rather than imitating or copying normal people. Third, differently abled are inferior to normal people. Truth is that no one is superior or inferior to anyone. Stephen being such a great personality, 
can never convey such wrong messages to the world. So we can say that option 3 is wrong. Fourth option says differently abled cannot achieve their dreams. It is the person's desire, passion and persistent hard work which helps a person to attain their goals and achieve their dreams, not the disability or ability of a person. This option is also wrong because Stephen did not convey such wrong message. Rather, he said the disabled should work on what they are good at, in spite of imitating or copying normal people. This was all about a visit to Cambridge. I hope I was able to make the most of your time. With this, I would like to recommend all the students to watch the movie on Stephen's life, The Theory of Everything. You will get to know a lot more about Stephen by watching this movie. Say for example, his success in the field of physics and his researches and achievements in science and technology. You will get a lot of motivation by watching this movie. Stephen's life history and his consistent struggle to achieve his goals while going through hardship of life are definitely going to inspire you and fill you with a lot of enthusiasm and interest so that you can get back to your studies with boundless of energy. It's a good movie to watch whether you are a science lover or not. It will be knowledgeable for you. With this note, I'll take your leave. Stay inspired, stay motivated. See you soon. Bye-bye.